All right, video number two, and hopefully this is going to be half decent. I'll see if I can, uh, I'm sure you're not going to see much, but I'll try to, uh, like I mean the details of the counters or whatever, pretty far up. So I'm learning as I go along. I know I'm going to be making some tactical uh, mistakes. Um, this is a completely different scale than I'm used to. I uh, like I'm even you know, like learning about line of sight and so on and so forth. And I one thing I did uh, make a mistake with, um, uh, I guess tactically or strategically or whatever, uh, with the Germans and the Austro-Hungarians is that I didn't realize that um, with interdicting fire because it's not uh, going to happen in that turn. They could have I could have moved uh, could have moved these guys up and started um, selecting hexes for interdicting fire, but. I didn't do that, and now the, um, hold on, i got to go downstairs and get the rules, hold on. I'll go quick, I hope. Yeah, sorry. Uh, talking with meandering Mike and I went, uh, went and grabbed the rules because we were talking about soldiers. All right, yeah, I'm just going to probably need them. Anyways, part of the uh, rules on right here, this is one of the attacks. So I moved, um, so like I said, my goodness, do things move quick when you're on the road. Like I uh, from the first video, I've made a few mistakes uh, in terminology when I was saying um, movement factor. <clears throat> Your movement allowance is... Basically, the uh, the movement cost is halved when you're going across the road right now. So anyways, and this is going to be another thing I'm going to hit with artillery over there. Um, these two pieces over here. Um, anyways, let's slow down. So this uh, German infantry unit right here is in woods. Uh, because they have not fired yet, they're hidden. I'm not allowed to attack them unless I'm adjacent. And it's something I'm learning. There's no zone that, zones of control at this scale. So I was able to actually move um, some British troops around here. So all three of these guys can attack this guy because they're adjacent. And it's going to be my first combat. So we're going to have, I'm going to go take a look at the rules and so on and so forth. The se and as you can see, well, I'll just tell you what I did with the movement. So I moved as many people as I could uh, over here. I le left this... Uh, 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 artillery piece here which is going to fire over to here and one of these machine guns is within range to also attack this spot um, this guy is just a little off I'm gonna leave them leave them there for now uh, I moved just unbelievably fast isn't it uh, how quick I was able to move the Japanese uh, this Japanese left thing towards this town we're exposed I understand that we'll see what happens but they haven't set up any interdicting fire yet and I'm moving uh, the middle, uh, the middle guys up up front here as well. No, no one can attack. No one can attack. We've moved way too too many uh, too many movement factors. All right. So let's do the. Should I do the simple one first? I think I'll, I'm going to have to go around on the other side. Yeah. Let's do the artillery one and see what that means. So that would be um, this guy's out in the open. I've got direct line of sight. Let's see here. So he's got a range of 10, the machine gun, uh, and he has not moved. He's in the woods. But as soon as I shoot out the woods, everybody's going to be able to, uh, I, I don't know if it's called observed fire, but they'll know that, that there's a machine gun uh, platoon sitting here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Boom. So I can hit him. He's out in the open. I can see him direct line of sight. This guy's got a range of 15, remember, because of the fog. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. I can hit this guy as far as I know because that he's blocking my line of sight. Oh, it's going to be interesting to take a look when I get into some more complicated uh, whatevers. I am going to try to bring this uh, rule, uh, this game out with uh, Rob. I think Rob's going to like it instead of the Suez one. We'll see how it goes. Plus, I'm going to be fresh. I've been playing it, uh, the, and then we'll get into this one. Okay, so... Is there anything weird that I have to worry about with combat and artillery? Uh, artillery, special capabilities. Mm, nope, looks like I'm okay. I'm going to read out the rules here for combat. 
All combat and soldiers is fire combat. There are two mo modes of fire, direct fire and observed fire. Both of these are direct fire because I can see them. All right. Uh, procedure at the end of the player's movement phase, I go and there is, and then I just take a look at the, the open factor, and he's in clear, so his defense strength is two. This poor guy over here. And then I'm going to add up my combat factor, and I guess I take a look at the CRT rating. Let's see here. Yep, I think that's all I'm going to do. All right, um, let's see here. So I've got, and I've, I add them up. So I've got um, 11 plus 6, that's 17 against 2, so that's 8. 8 to 1 odds, as far as I know. So uh, I'm going to roll a die 6, and away we go. Um, if you want to see, I, I'm not really looking, but well, hold on here. I'll put it here, and we'll see if you guys can see. Mm, kind of. How about I put it like this? I think you'll be able to see it. All right. And I have no, I think I'm doing it right. Oh my goodness. I don't know if a uh, high roll is good. Six. So a six on, uh, well, they only have it maximum of the eight to one, uh, seven to one here. So a six is an E. E is eliminated. The unit is removed from play and replaced with an eliminated marker. No unit, enemy, or friendly may enter or pass through a hex containing an eliminated marker. Whoa! That's interesting. I've, like, all, like I said, I'm learning all this stuff. So that thing got blasted out of existence and I don't. I have to go and take a look at what a, uh, an eliminated marker looks like. I have no clue. So what is the one? Okay, so it's this. Oh wow! This is so neat because I've seen these markers for other games or I have counters for them that I've printed off and I've been using them for develop uh, my my you know my version of develop Krieg and um, lo and behold now I know what a uh, eliminated marker looks like okay so this has not been going well for the uh, well this is why I said I needed to uh, play this out and learn okay so you're gone wow neato all right, so now we are doing this one, which is going to be interesting because I don't know. As far as in, and there's something about being adjacent to the hex. Uh, I think their combat thing is doubled or something. So, but I have to make sure if that's that could not be the case. So the for woods, uh, their combat uh, defense strength is five. Let's, but I knew I, I did see something about something interesting about. Um, well, the same purposes, and then and then. Fire is possibly only when the firing unit is going to translate. Yeah, I know that. Uh, procedure. The defense strength for all trains is... Na -na -na -na. Okay. I think I saw something where it said your, your thing is doubled if you're adjacent to them. Units have not yet fired from towns or woods are considered hidden. Units and British machine guns may not fire through artillery units, blah, blah, blah. Units concealed in blocking terrain. Units which have not yet fired from canal hexes. Oh, I don't see it yet, so I'm just going to go with the, the one off here. So I've got 11, 22, 36 uh, to 5. Did I say uh, the woods was 5? So that's uh, 7. I do believe, um, yep, All right, seven to one odds again. We'll see if my math is right later because I got four trillion things going on in my head. All right, here we go. Oh my gosh, I forgot. There's simultaneous combat. They get to fire back at something, I think, or something like that. So it's a four. So I, like, I don't remove these. Well, those guys obviously couldn't fire back because it's like, where the hell are they going to shoot from? So it's a four on a seven to one. So he's going to be eliminated. Um, however, uh, as far as I know, they get to fire back because it's simultaneous, simultaneous combat. And I would assume that means, um, hold on here, let's take a look. So I'm assuming the uh, second player only gets to fire on one unit. It doesn't, uh, I would assume, would that not make sense? So that would be out in the open, a two, 
uh, with the seven, so it's a one to two odds or something like that. Uh, or hold on here. Uh, so a seven, a seven. I'm just gonna stop stop doing that, Chris, because I'm looking at his eleven here. I'm, oh god, my brain. So we'll go for this uh, for this puppy here. So um, that's a two to a seven. So that's a three to one odds. As far as I know, I'm doing it right. I hope. Let's see what happens. And it's a three. Sorry, I haven't been showing you the things. Uh, D. Disrupted. The disrupted unit loses one movement phase and one fire phase. It may not. It may return fire in the phase in which it is disrupted. Disruption is recorded by placing a disrupted marker on top of the unit. Because so this guy's been eliminated. I think I'm doing it right. We'll find out later. Uh, I said I have to go get a disrupted marker, which I have no idea what they look like yet. Um, disrupted friendly phase D after enemy mute movement phase. I don't know what you're getting into. So that was an enemy phase. Disruption, you think? I don't know. We'll figure it out. At some point. No, that was a friendly phase disruption. Yes, because that happened during our phase. Okay. All right. So I'll pop him. I think I'm doing this right. Now it's going to get messy because I'm getting into you know like a, as you can imagine I'm getting into a realm where I'm gonna have to sit back and just like look at the rules for a while and whatnot but um, I think if I can work this out a little bit I think I'm gonna certainly bring this uh, bring this out with Rob on in two weeks I think Rob's gonna really enjoy this much more than the other one and uh, when I was talking with Meandry Mike Meandry Mike was um, mentioning that it actually uh, has good um, uh, there's a lot of people have good uh, good things to say. They said that it, it was a well thought out system. So there we go. Hopefully I did, I'm doing it right. Now we're going to go off to the central pirate's turn and and see what happens. Oh my goodness. Oh yeah. I didn't even. I should have uh, set up some interdicting fire. Well, I. You know what? I'm going to maybe offset them not doing it the way um, uh, I screwed up with the uh, the the Germans and the Aust or the central pirate's players. Okay, that's it. We'll see how this one looks. See you later.